So you're trying to take an airline company green, which doesn't sound like an easy thing to do. Well, it's not easy, but that doesn't mean we can't do it and we don't have to do it quickly. The larger the polluter, the more you rely on fossil fuels, the faster you have to act now. And that's why recently JetBlue has made an announcement that we are going carbon neutral on all our domestic flying. We already have a carbon deal for a lot of our international flying, and we see this as the way of, of business going but forward. But how do you do that? Is, that? is that buying offsets? And do those really work? Does that really make us carbon neutral? Well, the first step is that you avoid burning fuel where you you don't have to. You don't want to spend the money or burn the emissions in the first place. The second immediate step is carbon offsets now. And we've been very clear. These, these work for now. They're verifiable. They're traceable. They're retired on our behalf. They're permanent. And they're also only the first step and certainly not a silver bullet. Next has to come sustainable aviation fuel, a lower carbon alternative to a liquid fossil fuel. And of course, finally, we want to make the transition to electric aircraft, at least for short and medium haul. How do you think this plays into pricing, consumer demand? Are you expecting that you're going to get a bunch of consumers who are going to sort of sign up for that view and, you know, this is a way that they express their support by, you know, switching some of their demand over to your airline? Absolutely. We don't expect it. We're already seeing it. Europe has already seen it. And our job here at JetBlue, my job is to stay ahead of customer demand. We know people need to keep flying. They want to keep flying. Quite frankly, we need flying to keep the global economy together. But let's be real concrete. As I understand, sustainable jet fuel is more expensive than other jet fuel. By the way, there's not a lot of availability, but it's more expensive. Are your customers willing to pay more for their airline ticket because they know JetBlue is green and the next guy isn't? Right now, what JetBlue has done is take care of the carbon on the customer's behalf. We are paying for the carbon offset as a cost of doing business, which it is and which we know other companies are increasingly seeing it as. As for sustainable aviation fuel being more expensive, there's nothing inherently more expensive. There's nothing about the physics of it that makes it need to be more expensive. What we need is volume and we need economy of scale to bring that price down. Let me ask you about something I've wondered about for a long time. 30 years ago, I could fly to Chicago in half an hour less from Boston. I could fly to California in about 45 minutes less. I could fly from Boston to New York in 15 to 20 minutes uh, yeah. less. Some of that's about congestion and landing rights, yeah. but some of that's about airlines fly their planes slower so that they're going to be more fuel, uh, more fuel efficient. Well, that's what people have told me. Mm -hmm. Do you make flights longer on JetBlue no, in order to <laughs> save on carbon emissions and save on energy costs? Could you fly the planes faster if you wanted to? Each airline flies their plane differently. What we're doing is taking care of the carbon on the customer's behalf without asking the customer to make a sacrifice. We're not saying squeeze your knees in or give up first class. We're saying flying needs to happen. You need to be on our aircraft. And that creates carbon emissions, which we need to take care of as a cost of doing business. So how about the speed at which you fly the planes? So uh, flying slower does, in some cases, save fuel. A much more business-friendly, customer-savvy way to do it is to buy new aircraft, much like JetBlue has. The new aircraft are increasingly fuel efficient. So, so can we, we talk a bit more about that? So technology, I'm hearing mm -hmm. ultimately the answer is going to be technology mm -hmm. driving down the need to consume fossil fuels while we're waiting for better uh, you know, sort of green fuels. What are you seeing when you talk to the providers of jet engines that is yeah. helping us give you some sense of confidence this is going to get better and better over time? Yeah, I, aviation is a bright spot in this. We're not waiting for te the technology. The technology is here. The new aircraft are more fuel efficient. We've already made investments in new electric aircraft companies. Um, the carbon offsets are happening now. That's today. That's carbon being avoided and sucked out of the environment today. Sustainable aviation fuel already exists. It's already safe. We need more of it. We need economies of scale. That's an economics problem, not a technology problem. Sophia, one piece of technology the airlines can't fix on their own is air traffic control. That's true. Uh, if we were to really revamp, which I understand we need to do, it's obsolete. If we were tomorrow to revamp our air traffic control system, how much would it save in terms of carbon? It would be significant, and it would not just save carbon. It would save time. It would save money. This is a really good example of the intersection of business and government. The global climate crisis is so big. It's affecting us so 
quickly. There is no corner of the economy that hasn't already been affected that isn't going to be mm -hmm. potentially crippled by it. Everyone needs to be coming with part of the solution. Can I, tell you, can I tell you a story? When I entered the government, and we were in the beginning, in 2009, the government was thinking about its uh, priorities. I had a meeting as the head of the President's National Economic Council with the CEOs of then there were half a dozen or more uh, airlines, and they all told me we needed to work on the air traffic control system. Mm -hmm. They had a plan, and it was called Next Gen. And the thing about the plan was it was going to take a whole gen, a whole generation <laughs> to <years>. implement. <laughs> and I said, if we did this according to your plan, when would we have a modern air traffic control system? This was in 2009. And they said, 2035. Wow. And I said to them, that's really very interesting, and I appreciate it, and I know this is a really big, complicated problem, but World War II was a really big and complicated <laughs> war, and it took three and a half years yeah. Yeah. from the time we entered till the time we won yeah. with 12 million people under arms. Yeah. So why was it going to take us a quarter century to get a better air traffic control system. Right. Has any progress really been made on that? Yeah, there's been there's been progress made and I will say, you know, it's not the job of CEOs. No one's ever made money just waiting on congressional action, betting on what congressional action might or might not do. So what we need to do as airlines as the people running the companies today is find the solutions that we can work on today, like carbon offsets, like sustainable aviation fuel. So How about saying? airlines contributing? How about airlines contributing to an infrastructure that would enable them to save fuel costs by not spending as much time circling, that would enable the land scarce mm -hmm. landing slots to mm -hmm. be used? Do you, don't you think the airline industry should be willing to contribute to the airline traffic, air traffic control system we need? Yeah, really? absolutely. We, we have. We have next-gen equipment on our aircraft. You know, that oh. aircraft needs to talk to other parts of the system. Government does need to build out some of that. And every time we land a plane, every time we fly a plane, there's so much going on. There's so many ways that we can be reducing those emissions. And what we're really looking for is the ways that affect the customer today, because this is a customer-driven revolution that we're seeing. So, Sophia, are you seeing action on the part of your partners, the major oil companies, the, the engine companies, those that are manufacturing the planes? Is, is this becoming an ecosystem of folks supporting what you're trying to do and helping you drive it forward? I think there's a lot of room for opportunity there. I'd like to see more of the majors in the sustainable aviation fuel space. There's some companies that have started making it on the smaller side. We're really looking for economies of scale going forward in 2020. And I think 2020 is going to be the year where customers begin to demand that. But where is big energy on this? Because we heard they just met over in Davos to figure out what they could do about CO2 emissions. It sounds like there's a proposal. Say, so, okay, you want to do something? Here's one concrete thing you can do. What did they say when you, when you talk to them about this? You know, they're, they're working on a number of things. Our job in the conversation is to say the demand is here. And it's not just because we're good people who want to mm -hmm. sleep easy at night. It's because our primary fiduciary re responsibility on a daily basis is to protect that share price over the long run. And reducing carbon emissions, taking care of the carbon emissions you can't avoid is part of that financial value. So this goes back to a point we were making earlier. We we're talking about good returns in this space. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you've just uh, convinced yourself and presumably your shareholders that over the long term, share price would be higher if you become a green airline as opposed to if you didn't. Is that, is, are we reading this correctly? Yeah. I mean, look at the facts that we know. We know that the climate crisis is getting worse. We know that we can't have a global economy without aviation. That means in some fundamental way, aviation is going to have to deal with their emissions. And that's not just our industry, as you guys have seen, as you've said. It's literally going to be every industry. So the price of carbon is going to rise over time. Not taking a stance on that is effectively still making a so shouldn't we, I mean, I, 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 mean, I admire enormously, really I do, what your company's doing and the energy you're bringing uh, to this. But when you say the solutions are customer driven, I actually wonder whether you're right. That's what the tobacco industry used to say. They used to say the solutions to excess smoking are educating consumers about the bad health mm. and consequences and letting it be customer driven. And in fact, it turned out we've made enormous progress, almost none of which has been customer-driven. We tax tobacco, we've stopped 
outlawed smoking in restaurants, we've outlawed smoking in airplanes. It was basically when we decided it wasn't going to be customer driven, it was going to be policy driven that we solved the problem. And shouldn't we not be putting you at a competitive disadvantage if you decide that you want to do the right thing and do complete offsets and your, your airline competitors don't? Is it the right thing to do to make there be rules so you can do the right thing by the environment and by the future without being at a competitive disadvantage? Don't we need much more active public policy rather than this talk and hopes about private policy? Well, well, Larry, the kicker is I'm not trying to do the right thing. I'm doing the smart thing because dealing with carbon is part of going forward for any business. But if we changed public policy, wouldn't the smart thing be much more aggressive if we had a different public policy environment that was putting much more weight behind rewarding those who reduced carbon and penalizing those mm -hmm. who didn't. What I heard Larry say is this is putting you at a competitive disadvantage. Do you think this is putting you at a competitive disadvantage or do you think this is actually giving you a chance to compete and succeed in a way that others aren't? That's exactly right. We see this as a competitive advantage. We've taken a stance on carbon. We've taken a stance on where customers and our shareholders are going in the future and we see a financial advantage to being there first.